cases. Um, Australia has had uh, zero cases, not just for the day, but for the entire week, uh, which is a, just a testament to the work of the border control uh, and the entire community in uh, maintaining COVID safe practices. At the same time, uh, the world has seen 575,000 cases and, uh, and sadly 11,300 deaths in the last 24 hours alone. Year to date, the world has had 83.8 million cases, uh, which is more than all of 2020 combined. Um, already agonisingly over 1.6 million lives lost officially, and we've seen the uh, World Health Organisation in uh, the last few days indicate that the likely real global loss of life is between two and three times higher than that which has been officially recorded. Uh, in terms of tests, it's worth noting that we've had um, 17.85 million tests, including, uh, I think, a, a standout uh, 33,000 tests on a Saturday when there have been no cases. So Australians are continuing to come forward. Please keep coming forward for COVID-19 tests. Uh, it can help uh, protect you and help protect your family and help protect everyone else. And that's the same with, uh, with vaccinations. Uh, what we uh, have seen is uh, 37,469 vaccinations uh, in the last 24 hours on a, a Saturday, a record Saturday figure. Uh, significantly, uh, this week on the first six days, we've had 499,827,000 vaccinations. So we will pass the half a million vaccinations for the week for the first time. That uh, 499,000 for the first six days compares with 436,916 vaccinations for the entire previous week. Our national total is uh, approximately uh, 3.6 million uh, d uh, vaccinations which have been completed. That's uh, precisely 3,599,964, but there will have been at least six vaccinations since nine this morning. Uh, and uh, the states have provided uh, one point uh, 268 million vaccinations and uh, the Commonwealth 2.33 million vaccinations. Everybody is pitching in. I uh, particularly want to acknowledge uh, that our GPs, who are the backbone of the National Vaccination Program, have passed 2 million vaccinations. And uh, that's an enormous achievement from over 4,000 uh, general practices around the nation. Uh, in addition, uh, there is another very important development, and that is we now have over 1.4 million uh, over 70s that have been vaccinated. 48% of the over 70 population uh, have had at least a first dose right across Australia. So that is very heartening, and uh, we would urge everybody over 50, everybody over 70 to please keep coming forward. Vaccination now can save your life. As the Chief Medical Officer has uh, indicated with winter coming, we want everybody to be vaccinated as early as possible. Um, I just add a couple of uh, additional things. Uh, in terms of um, aged care, uh, we've now had uh, 4,122 uh, facilities uh, visited with either first or second doses, and that includes 94% of uh, facilities have had first doses administered and uh, that program is now highly uh, advanced and uh, the first doses are nearing completion. Uh, I'm uh, happy to take any uh, questions. I think uh, I'll start uh, looking at the list with uh, uh, Claire. Thanks, Minister, for the update. Um, just following the Minister's uh, comments on the fact that mRNA vaccines will be in plentiful supply by the back end of this year, what's your message specifically to those over 50 currently able to get AstraZeneca now. There was obviously a lot of confusion around your comments last week. What's your preferred uh, advice, I guess, for those that age group to take? And, and as well as I can, what is the latest on when we might expect GPs and other clinics to be able to have even more doses to give out, given that CSL are now producing more than a million uh, AstraZeneca jabs a week? Sure. Uh, so the message is very simple. Do not wait to be vaccinated. If you are in a qualifying group, uh, if you're in the over 50s, please come forward now. That has been our position, that is our position, and that will be our position. It's been reaffirmed in the medical advice from 
uh, ATAGI, the Technical Advisory Group on Immunisation, and from the Chief Medical Officer only today. Do not wait. Uh, and in particular, that was advice from the Chief Medical Officer to uh, general practices around the country that we want to encourage as many people to be vaccinated as early as possible. Um, if you are uh, over 50, please keep coming forwards. That's exactly what's happened in the last week uh, as two things have occurred. Supply has increased exactly as you say, Claire, and uh, that has allowed a doubling and a tripling of doses to uh, GPs. And at the same time, it's opened up only this week uh, for over 50s across the country. And uh, they've come forward and we have 48% uh, of over 70s, but we want to drive that to be as high as possible. Vaccination can save lives and protect lives. And if you aren't vaccinated and you do catch COVID, you could die. It's as simple as that. Uh, then in terms of uh, supply uh, going forward, so obviously uh, uh, we have increased the, uh, the supply very significantly and uh, as we have certainty, we'll continue to increase supply. And uh, I think that that's, uh, that's the program. Uh, we always have to maintain contingency. We have to uh, make sure that we have uh, uh, contingency against uh, forward projections. Uh, we know that uh, at some stage in the uh, coming weeks, in week uh, 17, um, CSL will be doing some line maintenance, so we've had to provision for that. And uh, so we have done that, so we have contingency, uh, we have provision, uh, and within the available doses, uh, all of that is being provided to general practices. So the capacity exists subject to uh, this week's doses being confirmed in the next 48 hours uh, to further increase supplies to GPs again but that has increased uh, the vaccination rate above half a million for this week uh, for the first time. Uh, Josh. Yeah, thanks Minister. Um, I wanted to ask you an aged care question if I could. Sure. Um, Labor's Claire O'Neill said this morning she had concerns that the $10 a day extra payment you announced in the budget may be pocketed by providers. Um, how will that be enforced that providers are using that money for care, like will it be spot checked by regulators and what action will be taken if providers aren't spending that money in the way that uh, you're hoping or expecting them to? Sure, so I'm a little bit surprised uh, that uh, Labor hasn't actually read the materials which set out the fact uh, very clearly that there has to be reporting on standards and so you cannot be paid unless you are reporting and meeting the standards in relation to the $10 a day uplift. It was a recommendation of the Royal Commission and it's being implemented in the terms of the Royal Commission. I, I will read uh, it, precisely the terms which the Commonwealth announced on budget night. To commence receiving the new government basic daily fee supplement, that's the $10 a day, providers will need to report on the adequacy of daily living services such as food, linen uh, and cleaning. They provide with a particular focus on nutrition. This quality reporting will support the star system. So if they don't meet the standards, if they don't do the reporting, they won't be paid. Uh, that's in black and white and it was there on budget night and uh, it's one of those things where I think they forgot to read the materials. Uh, 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 Olivia. Thank you. Um, can you commit to the Minister that the Royal Sure. So in terms of the, uh, the roadmap, uh, there, that has always been intended to be a National Cabinet document and a publicly available document. It's, it's a matter for National Cabinet, but all of the intention has been that uh, uh, the roadmap uh, will be publicly available subject to National Cabinet, of, of which I'm not a member, but that's certainly our view as a, as a Commonwealth. Uh, secondly, in relation to uh, a disability, uh, we have, as I said on Monday, been doing a, a reconciliation. So uh, there are four pillars by which we are vaccinating people in disability. Uh, one is the, uh, uh, the inreach by uh, providers. Uh, two is through general practice, uh, uh, through inreach. Three is through outreach or people visiting their, their GP, which uh, many people uh, do prefer to visit their own GP. And four is visiting uh, state or Commonwealth uh, Pfizer clinics for those who are under 50. Uh, the reconciliation so far uh, indicates that there are now over 4,000 uh, people who are disability 
uh, residents who have been vaccinated. Uh, Commodore Young will provide a, a further update tomorrow, but that number is significantly increased uh, compared with the uh, number that was at hand on Monday, and uh, it is likely to increase again. Thank you. Uh, Rob. So the first thing is uh, we do not want anybody to wait. Uh, do not wait uh, to be vaccinated. If you are eligible, please come forward. Uh, if you are not vaccinated and you catch COVID, you could die. It's as simple as that. Uh, that the advice has been reaffirmed uh, by both ATAGI, the Technical Advisory Group on Immunisation, and the Chief Medical Officer again today, uh, particularly uh, to general practices. Uh, the advice and timing fo uh, will follow uh, in terms of further vaccination rounds uh, will uh, follow the conditions for which any individual va uh, vaccine is uh, 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 determined by ATAGI. So uh, ATAGI will determine the, the age groups and will make them available in the time that we have supplied to all of uh, the age groups that ATAGI determined. So that's a, uh, that's a decision for them. Uh, but we've said uh, over the course of the year that we will have uh, 50 million AstraZeneca vaccines uh, available from production in Australia. There's 3.8 million on order from overseas, of which 700,000 have arrived. Uh, we will have uh, access to uh, <coughs> 51 million uh, Novavax uh, in the latter part of the year, um, subject to supply uh, from Pfizer, 40 million vaccines uh, uh, heavily weighted towards the uh, the last quarter um, are contracted and again subject to supply. Uh, they will be made available uh, on a whole of population basis, as we've said since the very day we announced it. Um, and in addition to that, 25 million Moderna, of which 10 million would be available this year, 15 million next year. But that is primarily, as we've said, uh, uh, as a backup uh, if there were a supply issue with one of the others. Um, or if uh, it's required for a, a variant uh, booster next year. Um, and so there's, in addition, there's 25.5 million, uh, 25 million COVAX vaccines. The answer is very simple. Do not wait and ATAGI will determine the age groups and uh, uh, supply will determine the timing. And if you do wait, uh, you put yourself and your family at risk. Uh, so then, uh, Tom McElroy. The strongest reason to be vaccinated is to uh, protect your life and to protect the lives of every other Australian. It's one of those things where uh, any one person's vaccination not only protects them, but it helps protect every other Australian. Uh, but we've always said that this is a, an important part in our capacity to uh, allow more Australians to travel and to allow more people to enter Australia. And so we're working uh, very constructively uh, with uh, business on, on that front. We're engaging uh, consistently, uh, but the, uh, the strongest possible reason to be vaccinated is to save your life and to save the lives of others. Uh, Jane. No, we may have, we may have lost Jane. So look, uh, on that, uh, I'll thank everybody and uh, make the simple point that uh, this week uh, we've had zero cases of uh, COVID-19 community transmission Australia-wide. We've also had record vaccinations and we will pass the half a million mark for the first time. Uh, there's an increasing number of Australians coming forward, but please do not wait, keep coming forwards. The more people who are vaccinated, the earlier they're vaccinated, the more we're protected as a nation. Take care. Thank you very Thank much. You.